I'm Andrew Wyrick. I work at uh, Good Twin. We're a creative development company, I guess we would say, for the web. Um, I was going to talk about Yo, Bauer, and Grunt, but we'll see how far we get. Uh, so Yeoman was project created in October. Um, it started as kind of a more monolithic tool, but they've since separated out into kind of three very disparate tools. Uh, so we will cover each one very briefly um, and discuss their own merits for each. So Yo was created specifically to do app generation. They looked at it, especially what the Rails community did with their app generation, and said, gee, we'd be nice to be able to do that, especially um, across a myriad of different needs. So some people are using Ember these days for web application development. Some people are using Angular. Some people are using Backbone. Um, but regardless of those, there's probably a set of best practices that each of those respective community wants, uh, thinks is best when you're starting an application. It would be really nice to have boilerplate being generated up with a tool. Uh, so Yo is born. Uh, we're not going to uh, run Yo Angular, but if you look at their website, which is yeoman.io, uh, it's the actual example they have on the front of the website, so you can write yourself when you have the internets. Um, and also, the tools are out there already to create a generator of your own. Um, <coughs> and we'll see an example of that actually on one of the final slides of people creating their own generators. Uh, so the usefulness of this tool is especially when you're starting a project. Uh, this tool is extremely young. It's definitely in its infancy, but it's already very useful if you're doing what I like to call a weekender, if you're just kind of a project that you're going to gin up really fast, run on Node, just trying something out for the first time, like Angular, for example, or Ember, which I know we talked about last time. If you're going to try that for the first time, you can use Yo to generate a scaffold that's going to get you started with Ember, Ember very, very quickly. So let's talk about Bauer very quickly. Manage your dependencies. Uh, so I was going to share this embarrassing slide. This is actually an app that we released that's in production today. There is, and sex doesn't have Zoom, but um, this is <laughs> this is, a, this is a vendor assets JavaScript folder from a Rails app we did. Um, there are five different versions of jQuery UI in here. There's two different versions of jQuery. Um, I've got a couple of non-minified and minified versions of those files sitting in here. I've got about 10 different plugins for jQuery. Um, some Google Maps stuff in there. Some testing stuff in there. This is a mess and I never intended to do this and I go in, you know, you always go into apps with the best intentions, but if you don't leverage tooling that's out there, and you're drinking from a fire hose at the end of the project, this is probably what your JavaScripts folder is going to look like as you're trying to release a product. So instead of doing that, uh, Bauer is, is here to kind of save the day. <coughs> Bauer is just package management. So if you're using Node these days, NPM, certainly you're very used to this in the Rails community from day one with gem sets or gems, and just the general ability to manage packages. Uh, and so Bauer sets out to do that. Bauer was created by the Twitter team. Um, there's a bauer.json file, very similar to a gem file, if you're from the Rails community, or very similar to a package.json file uh, for Node. But it's specifically around grabbing components that you need for your front end. Uh, again, we're going to show a sweet example, but we're not. Um, what Bauer does not do, Bauer does not care about how you're loading your scripts file in your app. This is from the same example. It was using require and using require.js to build and reference and load script files. That's not what Bauer's doing at all. It doesn't care how you load script files. So if you're just in your HTML doing script tags or using a script loader uh, like require.js or any of the other script loaders that are out there, uh, that's not what Bauer's solving. Bauer's only... Um, the problem Bauer is trying to solve is, I need a version of jQuery and I need a version of jQuery UI. I want to make sure that the dependencies between the two match. So if I need jQuery UI 1.10, I make sure that I have the right version of jQuery that supports that and I don't get those out of sync. Uh, and it will pull those down for you. Uh, it's, it's all three of these tools, by the way, run on Node. So you have to have Node installed and then you have NPM installed. You can um, NPM install all three of these tools. Uh, the problem Bauer has that, let's say, an NPM or Gem or even even Microsoft Package Management System doesn't quite have this problem. We created all these JavaScript, especially GitHub repos and open source projects, 
and then a package management tool came along, right? When Node started, NPM was there like day one, and everyone adopted this, okay, you're gonna create this package JSON file, and you're gonna manage your packages that way. Uh, Rails really took hold of the gem, the gem idea and ran with it, so it, it would be almost unheard of to see a GitHub repo for something you're gonna pull in as a package into Rails and not have it be a gem. So with, with the front end, though, we kind of existed for years without it. So now we're trying to retrofit it, and you're gonna run into problems with that. Um, a lot of times, Bower will simply pull the entire GitHub repo of whatever that thing is. But if that thing requires intermediate build steps to give you a finished JavaScript file, for example, that's probably a little bit incongruent. So um, to give a, an extremely slow example, um, let's see if we can load this. Uh, AngularJS is a great example of this. Angular itself is not the repo you'll grab. Um, if you actually search for it, there is a Bower Angular repo that the Angular project manages, and this is actually where the Bower stuff is. Now, just like uh, you know, just like there's a listed repository that uh, NPM knows how to talk to, there's a listed repository that Bower knows how to talk to. So, in your Bower dependency file, if you're asking for Angular, it's going to know to look here. Um, here's an example. Actually, why don't we look at a brief example of a Bower.json file? So this guy itself has no additional dependencies. It's not dependent on anything. But this is a simple example. It's just JSON. <coughs> and you can list your dependencies here. Uh, following this presentation, we'll put up all of the code that we were going to use as examples. <laughs> so the thing, that, the thing to remember with Bower right now is it's young, it's in its infancy, it's still actually very useful. I'll talk about what GoodTwin uses Bower for today. Um, one of the really nice things about Yo that I really enjoyed with the scaffolding is um, when you run, let's say, Yo Angular and it builds a, a kind of a, a bootstrap uh, directory structure and all the stuff you need to get started with an Angular project, it creates a grunt file.js. So this is where all of the different build steps are gonna be. And what's really, really nice about this, if you're, you wanna uh, get started learning how to use Grunt effectively, go to yeoman.io, figure out how to run one of the scaffoldings, run it, and then immediately look at the Grunt file.js. It's gonna show you everything you really should be doing today with your web apps, everything from um, you know, how you should be doing minification, versioning the files that you're sending out there, uh, PNG optimization, all of that stuff. It'll give you a good example of in what order they're doing it, what they think a best practice is. And the grunt file that you see in any of those scaffolding, any of the scaffolding that you create, of course, um, <laughs> good grunt. It's really, it's really a good, it's indicative if you're doing it right or not right now. Um, and really what you should be doing, regardless of whether or not you can use any of these tools. Uh, and there was even some stuff, I think, I forget what we specifically picked up, but the first time we looked at the ground file, like, oh yeah, we're not doing that with a separate project that's not going to use these tools and actually is a Rails backend. So, let's go to this one. So, so here is actually, for those of you up front and can see it, Here's all of the thing. Here's all the different task names that are running. Um, for those who can see it, John mentioned namespacing, so clean or what I kind of call namespacing. So there's above there's a uh, clean configuration. Inside of that, there's a dist configuration. So by calling clean dist, it's not going to run everything under clean. It's just going to run whatever's under clean dist in the configuration. That's a multitask, right? Yeah. So there's a lot here. CD, um, I think the one we actually picked up was CDNify, which is a really cool tool that will actually look to see if there are CDN versions of certain files you're using, um, and you can leverage those. So again, it's kind of a fantastic litmus test. It's a great way to learn how Grunt works, and it's a great way to make sure that you're doing the right things when you're uh, actually putting your own projects out on the web.
Come on. <laughs> <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> How many bites do you waste a day, Zach? <laughs> um, so, I talked about generators. Already there's a lot of com different communities that are grabbing onto this idea and trying to figure out how to do things the right way. I love this one because this is probably the worst offender on the internet, which is WordPress. Right? You probably see more WordPress sites out there with no, no minified, there's nothing minified. The JavaScript's all over the place. There's like 16 different script tags. And you know, it's basically worst practices a lot of the time. Uh, but if there can be a way to leverage Yo, for example, and scaffold up a new WordPress project. So what this guy actually does is goes out to get, it grabs whatever version of WordPress you put in uh, when you run the scaffolding. It'll grab the latest from GitHub if you don't put one in. And it'll create a new theme structure for you. And inside of that theme structure, it will put um, everything you need to build from. So, and again, this is a great one to check out if you actually are dealing with WordPress. Um, certain pieces of this are already being adopted by different community members. Um, example, in the Rails community right now, there's this project, Bower Rails, uh, that we're using to manage that really embarrassing slash vendor folder that I just showed you earlier. Um, I actually wrapped Bower in a rake task, so you're still using rake to do this. And so it's, it's a little more streamlined with the way you might be using Rails today if you're using Rails. Uh, so there's, there's a lot of different pieces of what is Yeoman today being used. Again, this project really only showed up in about October. And in its modern form, where it's these three disparate tools, it's probably only a couple of months old. But there's already a lot of value in the community. So I would encourage you, if you use Grails um, and you're a Java backender, uh, if you're .NET, I don't know what to tell you. Um, but most communities out there at this point are already adopting this. Actually, I'm sure it won't be long before we see some things with .NET. Um, I wanted to fin finish off briefly by, by giving a real sense of where we're using this tool today. Um, so on what we call... <laughs> What I'm pointing the meaner stack, which is an all JavaScript stack, so that's MongoDB, uh, Node.js, and Express.js in the back end, and then it's using Angular and Require.js in the front end. Um, <coughs> we're building a lot of these projects. A lot of our rapid projects that we're doing that are two or three days long, we're building on that stack. Uh, and we use, Yo we use Yeoman today fully to do that. Uh, right now, I just said Rails, we use that Bower piece, and we actually use require JS, which we didn't talk about today, but um, that's what we actually use for Rails in terms of what we do with these tools today. Anything static, we use Yeoman as well. I showed you this WordPress generator. I would suggest if you're doing WordPress today, keep track of it. It's still a little bit immature. Um, <coughs> if you have some quick projects you're doing within WordPress, feel free to try it, but we use a tool called WordLess uh, today. So uh, the point there is we're actually seeing um, we're actually using Yeoman today in stuff we're creating for production. Uh, example of that is a site that we started and finished uh, this Friday called 8-Bit Omaha, which is something that um, we'll actually be using for Big Omaha in a few days. And this will excruciatingly slowly load. And let's drop out of this and see if... And we'll load the GitHub repo really quick. I'll show you a living example. It's not public. <laughs> I don't think it is, at least. Not public to my user anyway. <laughs> yeah, I think we explicitly found a way to eliminate Zach Leatherman from seeing any of our repos. <laughs> lest, he, lest he start submitting pull requests that we have to deny for their lack of quality. That's fair. <laughs> I will make that public uh, after we're done here today and I get an internet connection. Uh, so you can go to github.com slash goodtwin slash 8-bit and you can see how Yeoman's being used live in the wild. Um, 
we took, what we did is we ran scaffolding with Yo Angular on Friday. Uh, we started the app there. We, um, we actually use Require.js for almost everything we do. So we kind of inserted that into, into the process and into the grunt file so things would be built, it appro built appropriately. Um, and then we were off and running from there. We used Bower to grab the dependencies. Any dependency we needed, we just updated that Bower JSON file with the new dependency. Um, we grabbed them, and then from there we were up and building. So we spent almost no time going to disparate GitHub's, you know, GitHub URLs to grab this JS and that JS. Uh, it was really, really fast to get started. And we actually were doing testing from the get-go because with all of these, the scaffolding that Yo's doing, um, I think every single supported scaffolding right now, testing is already integrated. So you can run grunt test, and there'll be some version of testing that's going to run. <coughs> Which is really nice, because if you're lazy like me and testing's already not set up, it's really easy to be like, meh. <laughs> My code's pretty awesome to begin with. I don't really see why I would ever need to test it. It always works the first time. So next time we'll be going over testing. <laughs> <laughs> so this site will never load, of course. Is that Darth Vader for Greg? It is. Oh yeah. So you can probably load it on your phone. I probably will load faster in your phone if you want to check it out than here. It's a really pretty hey, simple hey, site. Hey. Oh, I was going to say I have a rising card. You already missed it. Um, so this, is, this was started by... Um, Adam, who's a designer at, at Good Twin, just is a uh, drawing these eight bits of just friends, and that's supposed to be me. I don't think that looks like me. Come on, Adam. <laughs> um, nice. But as you scroll down, there'll probably be certain people that you might wreck. Is Cody Peterson here? No. Yeah. Oh, boo. Um, I'm seeing if anybody in the room is here. I think mine is up there. Who's me? Who said mine? Yeah, Marcus Ross is here. Wait, we'll find. <laughs> oh, gee, I wonder if it's you. <laughs> but anyways, and then there's really simple filtering up here, so you can search by any piece of information we have about you, so if you want to find somebody by Twitter handle, uh, it's really, really easy to do that. So, um, but the point is, and then you, these, you can actually, there'll be a download link here that we'll push up later today or tomorrow. Uh, but this go, took us a couple of hours to build and get out the door. Uh, but for us, a couple hours previous to this project was build it, get it out the door, JavaScript's not minified, CSS hasn't really been touched, maybe we used SCSS, but you know, we, we didn't follow, our quick turnaround projects never followed any sort of best practices, right? They were. Let's just do it in three hours and put it out there. Uh, this, but if you actually look at the source to this, uh, there's, there's versioning, everything's minified, put together. We were able to use require right off the bat with this, and this uses Angular, and we were able to just build this project in a couple of hours. So it's really, for, 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 for your quicker projects, it's going to help you turn around things for right now. And my other suggestion to walk away with is run the scaffolding once, take a look at that gruntfile.js, and see what you're not doing today that you might want to be able to be doing, or just to learn grunt itself. It's really, really helpful. It helped me a lot, certainly. <coughs> so other than that, how do we do? Yeah, we're late. All right, thanks, guys. Yeah, Matt. What?